Hey there, Josh from Builder here. This video is all about the foundational understanding of how to design and style both in Builder and anywhere else across the web. Now, one important thing to know about Builder is that we use the global language of design that all browsers and phones use called CSS, and it stands for Cascading Style Sheets. Now, this was a strategic decision that Builder made very early on, and it actually came as a result of having built previous versions for themselves as an agency before they made Builder for everybody else. And that was because the best way to make sure that you were always going to be able to build anything that you wanted for the web and you were never limited by someone else's choices was to provide full access to CSS. CSS is a living, breathing language that browsers are always developing for changing and improving. If Builder limited your access to CSS, we would be limiting your ability to react and change to CSS as it grows. For the beginners in particular, I wanna go over what CSS really is and how it works. So as we said earlier, CSS stands for cascading style sheets. So let's talk about what we mean by cascading. And let's start with an example of a waterfall. So what you see here is a two-tier cascading waterfall. You'll see the original source of water at the top, one waterfall, a small pool of water there, and then another waterfall before the water finally continues down the river. What's really important to know is that the water here is essentially our style of our elements. And without touching or messing with the water at all, the water at the bottom is the same as the water at the top. So let's take the example of if I put dye at the very bottom of this water. I know because it's cascading, the dye is not going to go impact the water at the top. But once the water reaches this particular location, because I'm putting the dye right here, it's going to color the water the color of the dye. So we have a cascading system, but because the location of the dye is at the bottom, it's only influencing that water at the bottom. Now let's flip this. Let's say I put the dye right at the top of the water before it even hit any of the waterfalls. You'll see I put the dye in and immediately the dye will cascade down and impact the rest of the water as we go. Now let's shift, let's say the dye to the middle. We still know the top of the water is now untouched. The dye in the middle has now been touched and is colored the color of the dye. In that middle, here is also now influencing everything beneath it and coloring the water as it goes down. Now here's where it can get a little bit tricky. Let's say I was dyeing the very top of the water still with this dye, but at the bottom, I wanted to change the color of the water. I could introduce another dye down at the bottom. And so in this circumstance, we'll see that top dye influence the water right at the top we'll see it influence the water right in the middle. But at the bottom, we've introduced a new dye that's gonna override any previous dyes and it's going to color the water in this particular color. So this is what we mean by cascading, as well as an idea of how overriding a cascading attribute might look like. So even though we've taken a command from the top of a certain style type, if we override it later on, because it was overridden, it will take the most recent die, the most recent command it was given to style itself. So let's talk about the two examples where this cascading effect really shows up inside of styling of your website. The first is when you're talking about parent and child elements. In development, when you have something that is inside of a container, the container that holds it is called the parent, and anything inside of it is called a child. So typically when you're building a site, you're going to use a combination of things called sections, divs, and containers quite frequently. These types of elements are typically acting like containers and are there normally to house other elements on the page. When we overlay this process into our cascading example, what you'll find is when we style something at the parent level, all of its children are going to inherit those specific attributes of the parent. But as we showed earlier, we can override some of those attributes if we decide to with a new set of instructions for each child that we see fit. 
The second place that our cascading example pops up while you're developing your sites is in classes. Classes are a staple of styling with CSS. A class is essentially a grouping of style attributes together so that instead of having to write out every single style attribute on every single element, the class lets you group all of these together and assign just that class to the element and it will get all the styles that you want it to have. So with classes, you also have an additional cascading effect that you get where the most recent class added to a specific element, if it conflicts with any of the previous classes assigned to it, it will override the previous classes. The final tool that you have in your belt with CSS is inline styling. Inline styling is typically done when you're doing a website. Instead of saying, okay, I'm gonna create a class in my style sheet that I then apply to my element with a class ID. Instead, I'm gonna directly on this element itself, add the styling that I want. And that's called inline styling. It's inline inside of your HTML to style that particular property for that particular element. In our cascading example is the very, very bottom of the cascading effect. It will override all other attributes that particular property has. So if you ever need to trump all of the style settings that you have at a particular property, your inline styling for those properties will really come in handy as you develop your application. Now, the final important thing to know about cascading is how your style classes interact with your inherited traits from parents to children. And it gets really simple. The easiest way to do this is visualize them as essentially stacked together with the parent to child relationships on top and then the classes beneath them, and eventually the inline styling beneath that, right at the bottom, overriding any other style property that element has been given. So there you have it. Now you know what CSS is, what cascading is, how inheritance works from parent to children, and also how style classes and inline styles all combine to dictate how the different elements in your pages actually look. In the next video, we're going to go over how Builder does all of this so that you can start implementing this without code and the time spent learning every little detail.